What up ladies and gents, it's been a little bit and this is going to be the updated tier list for PvP in SOD and as usual this is going to be for BGs and group play, so Blood Moon, things like that. We're going to do a separate video on duels, should be like later this week, maybe next week, just trying to get all the info from other top players that have been dueling a lot, sort of getting their opinions on where their class stands in that. So I want to try and make the best dueling tier list I can for you at the moment as it's really been starting to pop off a little bit more uh as the primary i guess content that pvpers are doing along with pre-made wars and gulch now for group pvp we're going to be starting out with affliction lock and this is going to be low down this is in the d tier and it's been there for a little while next phase is going to start popping off a little bit more but right now the damage on it is relatively low and the survivability on it unless they run meta is also relatively low and the drawback, obviously, if they run meta, is that they can't use fear. They're, and they're, they're not going to have haunt available to them. So, a lot of drawbacks, regardless of which way they go. Uh, along with that, the AoE damage of the spec isn't that high. So, you either really need to be you know, very tanky, putting out a lot of single target pressure, or putting out a lot of AoE pressure to sort of make it into the higher tiers of this list. And I'll, I'll try and explain as I go, but as I said, this is an update, so some things are going to be different to the last tier list I've done. Some things have, have obviously had buffs, some things have had nerfs when it comes to, you know, the most recent changes by Blizzard. So I'm trying to incorporate those as best I can. Obviously, things are changing all the time. If you want the most updated version of this list, then I suggest going over to my Discord as I keep this as, as more updated than I do on YouTube in the sub channel. Obviously, I can't make a video every single time with you know, one class going up a tier or down a tier. It's just going to be ridiculous. Next up, we've got Arcane Mage. And Arcane Mage has got not too bad single target pressure, especially if they run Arcane Surge, where, you know, they can potentially one-shot somebody once every two minutes. But it does leave them relatively vulnerable since they'll be Oom afterwards. And it is a kind of gimmicky, gimmicky spec. Generally stronger in duels, as the AoE pressure, again, isn't that high. Obviously, you could do the AoE blood farm during Blood Moon, but that now has been nerfed so that the AoE damage on the altars is significantly reduced. So they're going to be in the C tier. Next up, we've got Arms Warrior. Now, Arms Warrior, again, it hasn't really changed that much over the course of Phase 2. I would still say it's around, you know, B tier. Still providing good utility. And, you know, health for the team, good engage. And I would say the, the good engage and the mortal strike are the main perks of this. Their, I guess, rivalry or, or closest competitor for their niche right now, I would say, is Enhancement Shaman, which is actually really, really strong right now. So Warrior, a bit more of a, a secondary pick. However, you know, taking both along isn't going to hurt. Being able to put up that healing debuff is definitely going to cause a lot of problems for the other team in terms of keeping people alive, especially with how bursty SOD is right now. So, if they didn't have that, they would be, I think, a little bit lower. Their damage isn't amazing, but backed by a healer and, you know, with very, very good gear, they can definitely still dish out some some hurt, while at the same time being very tanky. So, they're, they're you know, mid-B tier, I would say, something like that right now. There are a couple of other specs that are, are ahead of them still. Uh, we're going to skip Assassination, uh, and we're just going to do one rogue spec, as it really does overcomplicate things otherwise. So we're going to leave that one for now. Uh, and we're going to move on to Boomy, which is still firmly in the S tier. Although they had their Star Surge nerfed, their casting is still really, really strong with Eclipse. And even if they do get a target on them, they still have good kiting potential with Travel Form. And they have decent, you know, okay instant damage available to them. Plus, obviously, the opportunity to run Wild Growth as well to be a very good support healer. Leads them very, very highly uh, valued in group combat. So they are our first class in the S tier. So next up, we've got BM Hunter. And they have fallen a little bit off the top with changes over the kind of past two phases. But they still are really, really strong. The pet is dealing out massive amounts of damage. And obviously now is unfearable if they pop beast within. You really do have to kind of focus down this pet. Otherwise, you're going to get massive pushback and damage from it. And it's going to start causing you problems. Once the pet is dead, however, they are pretty vulnerable. So this is what I think, for me, has put them down a little bit into A tier. Now, next up, we've got Shadow Priests. And to be honest, this phase, Shadow Priests really are cooking. And speaking of cooking, 
This video is actually sponsored by HelloFresh. If you've been living under a rock and don't know what HelloFresh is, it's a meal kit that deliver all the ingredients pre-portioned for your chosen meals right to your house. There's easy to follow instructions for each meal so that even if you're new to cooking, you can make yourself high quality food that's healthier than just getting a takeaway. This is HelloFresh's biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from so that they have something for everybody. There's low calorie options, high protein options, there's speedy options that take less than 20 minutes to cook. I know there's some older lads watching too. So if you have kids or just a picky wife, there are family friendly options as well. I've tried a few of them myself and my son always devours them. When you sign up for HelloFresh with my link and code, you'll get a free dessert for life with each box as long as your subscription is active. HelloFresh, let's do it. Oh, fresh ingredients. Please. Once cooked, drain. Is this bad boy? See, this is the thing. Lee doesn't like things too spicy, and I like things spicy, so what we do is we make things spicy. Oh, that's not good though. Coconut milk, that's gotta go next. Oh, bro, 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 don't you go. Look, they even cut the chicken for you, man. It's good as well if you're uh, if you're cooking for two, if you're with the missus or whatever, and you normally just get takeaway or whatever, or you just don't really know what to cook, or you just eighteen. <laughs> Nothing happened. So it, look, it looks pretty good. Look at that bad boy. Woo! I think that's decent. Oh mate, the sauce though. I might just eat the sauce. Dude, there's no pasta rice combos, are there? What dish has pasta and rice in it? Gonna be honest, got a bit carried away, was enjoying doing the sponsorship a little bit too much. Uh, forgot we were doing a tier list. Getting back to it now though, Ellie Shaman is in A tier. I would say a little bit ahead of BM Hunter. They are very, very scary if they get to cast. The saving grace is that Flame Shock is only 20 yard range, but if you do get a Flame Shock on you and take a Lava Burst to the face, you're gonna feel it. So watch out for Ellie Shamans. Gonna be very, very strong in the back line if they are allowed to cast. Next up, and this is this has been kind of a, like a dark horse coming up, but they've received buff after buff, and I actually think they're in sort of lower S tier now. Uh, maybe maybe Shadow's is the top of S tier, maybe Boomy. It's, it's very close. I'm going to leave it there for now, but Enhancement definitely breaking into the S tier. They're really, really, really tanky with Wei, and if they get to you, they really do dish out a lot of damage now. So the, the one thing that you can kind of count on is their mobility being a little bit bad, so you really do have to try and kite them where possible. But if they get to you and they stick on you, they are a problem, man. They got tremor totem, they got they got decoy totem to stick on you with the freedom. They got purge, they got shocks, they got high amounts of burst damage. They're a nightmare, man. So yeah, enhanced shamans are are, are really up there right now, and uh, probably the number one. If you're gonna bring a, a, a sort of tanky class to your group for blood moon, enhanced has probably got to be it at the moment. Next up, we got Destro. In fact, that's a lie. We got Demo Locks. And Demo Locks, this is obviously going to be the Soul Link Lock with Meta. This is going to be, I would say, in the C tier, just because they're kind of tanky and annoying. They resist a lot, but their damage is just not not great. Although it is instant with the Searing Pain, the, the overall pressure that they put out isn't that high. So they're more like a frontline kind of guy. And then it's just like, well, why would you bring one over, for example, an Enhanced Shaman? So they're kind of low down on the tier list for me. Next up, we got Destro, and Destro, again, it plays kind of the same way as Meta. They're a little bit less tanky, but the damage is just way higher with all the fire bonus damage talents in the Destro tree. They they make the Searing Pain spam in Meta form a lot more problematic, and, and it's just really, really obnoxious where you've just got this Meta Warlock running at you, pressing one button, and actually doing problematic damage. So they're in the B tier for me. Potentially, you know overtaking arms warrior even just a little bit i would say still very very annoying to deal with next up we've got the feral druid and feral has kind of this spec where they can play in bear form they can push in be quite tanky in the bear form obviously feral charging in and doing a lot of aoe damage in the group battles while being quite tanky so i think they're up in the b tier as well right now their main flaw right now is that they can't really shift that freely without going oom um. so maybe we'll see a little bit more of that when they get some more talents in future phases and they'll become a little bit more of a threat i think they're kind of again they're building up towards being a very very strong spec and next up we've got fire mage and fire mage obviously been i think slowly rising through the ranks i think i'm going to put them in a tier as well 
just a little bit behind Ellie, but their, their AoE damage is insane, obviously, with Living Bomb, Living Flame, even though it just got recently changed, it's still quite annoying to deal with as long as they, you know, pop it from a relatively close range. So they can almost use it defensively now. And yeah, if they are left alone, they can put out really high single target damage as well with Hot Streak, Instant Pyros coming out, and all of that good stuff. So yeah, Fire Mage up and coming, I'd say for sure. And definitely worth grabbing one of these if you are running any kind of caster cleave comp, I would say for Blood Moon. Frost Mage, however, is is down for me in like D tier. Definitely has potential with duels, but in group combat, the single target damage isn't that high. Yeah, okay, you can bring one for Imp Blizzard, but then it begs the question, well, why wouldn't you just bring a Survival Hunter? So, yeah, the the, the the Frost Mage not really putting out enough pressure for me to actually break into sort of higher tiers. Maybe that'll change when they get Deep Freeze later on. They'll have a little bit more control. And you'll bring the Frost Mage for, you know, that control control class. But the, the, the reward for actually getting Frost Bolts off isn't really that high compared to other classes where, you know, Ellie, if they get cast in Boomy, Fire Mage... Um, even Destro, like if, if you let them cast, they will punish you. And for, Frost Mage just doesn't do that for me at the moment. So that's why I've got them a little bit further down. Uh, Fury Warrior, I haven't really seen many of, so I'm going to just leave that out for now. MM Hunter, again, you can have really like a bis geared MM Hunter and they still won't cause you that many problems. And it just begs the question, why would you bring an MM Hunter over either a BM or a Survival? Where the Survival obviously has a lot more utility talents available to them and, and you know, Survival talents where they have a lot of HP um, and can cause a lot of problems with things like entrapment. Whereas MM, the single target damage just isn't high enough to justify bringing one over the other specs for me. So I'm putting them in, I would say a little bit ahead of, of, of Demo Lock. Same sort of, you know, area as Arcane Mage, where they, they do have a little bit of single target damage, but not regularly enough to, to make them worth bringing over other specs, I would say. Next, we've got Rhett. And probably top of beast B tier for Rhett. Obviously, very obnoxious running in and and having that bubble for uh, survivability. If they get low, they can move out with it. They can kill people in it. They obviously have Hodge. They have pretty decent burst damage at the moment as well. So they are a bit of a pain to, to sort of kill and deal with quickly if they do push into you. And this allows, if they have a backline... The, the the back line to sort of turret on you and cause a little bit of pressure while this ret is just in your face uh and you know forcing you to deal with him before anything else can really happen in the fight so yeah i think ret's definitely a solid pick and and probably only second to and en enhancement shaman in terms of like that melee getting in your face and causing problems uh sub rogue is i think just a tier dishing out insane damage with the lower energy cost mutilate still and they have loads of utility, loads of mobility with step, uh, sprint. They got the stealth step as well. So they, they have a lot of options to move around and, you know, survive, be slippery. So a good rogue is definitely going to cause problems. However, they are kind of squishy. So if you do manage to catch them sort of pushing in onto you rather than peeling for their own team, then you do have, uh, you know, a pretty good chance of taking them down in, in good time compared to something like Enhanced Shaman. But they, they fill a slightly different niche, I would say, in that regard. They're more of a lockdown spec compared to Enhance, which is more of a tank spec. Both obviously dishing out very good damage, which is why they earn their high places in the tier list. Survival. I think Survival has fallen off a little bit, especially since the melee nerfs. Survival, I think, now plays a little bit more ranged slash utility in terms of like the trap launcher, entrapment, uh, overall slows, and then some ranged damage and just pet annoyance. So... For me, obviously bringing line as well is is pretty strong. I'll probably put them around here, as they are they are just a good group utility class to bring now, similar to to arms warriors, and they bring a few different things, but they're sort of in the same ballpark, I would say. That I think is going to be our final DPS class on the tier list right now, and things shaping up quite nicely actually. There there really isn't that much in it for me between sort of like I think the S tier classes sort of stand a little bit above. But like A tier down to B tier, I mean, there isn't that that much in it. There is there is obviously a difference, but they are definitely closer than they have been previously. And I think with the small amount of patches that Blizzard has actually done, okay, yeah, there are some things that aren't perfectly balanced. But, you know, considering we haven't had that many changes realistically, I think they've actually done a relatively good job with, 
you know, getting things in a rough, rough, uh, roughly correct ballpark. Obviously, some things need uh, tweaking, some things need some love, but, you know, without doing sort of 10, 20 patches to try and get everything, you know, perfectly right, I think they're doing a good job. So excited to see where it is going forward, and I think we're probably about halfway through the phase at the moment. So, yeah, we'll see how we go moving forward and, and how things look. Maybe I'll do another one of these videos, maybe another one won't be needed. As I said, I will update the the tier list in the sub channel on the Discord if you want constant updates, but there likely won't be anything massive. Probably. We'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope that my thought process makes sense. If anything is sort of not sitting right with you, if you play a certain class and you're like, actually, my class is, is a bit stronger than that for these reasons, please do let me know in the comments. I'm happy to, to discuss it and, you know, try and try and adjust maybe and get things looking a little bit more correct. Obviously, this is my opinion, and there's probably things that are not quite right, but we'll see. Anyway, have a great day.